And with that, we'll go on to our second uh, speaker, sharer, Edith Hudson. Uh, Edith is, uh, likes to be known as not the stereotype police officer, <laughs> stoic, hardened, iron-fisted. Uh, she was promoted to a captain of District 5 on the north side of Milwaukee. Uh, her priorities are upline communications and community building. She was the first female supervisor in the history of the Tactical Enforcement Unit. Sounds like you ought to be stoic, hard, and iron-fisted. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we're, we're going to get an interesting story in another environment. A woman, she's the second woman to hold the current rank of assistant chief of police. Uh, her primary focus as assistant chief is oversight and employee development. How befitting uh, our subject today. She has a wonderful job of allowing her employees to take their natural talents and thrive. Partner with community organizations in our faith community and pairing them up with individual officers. You'll notice uh, a couple weeks ago it was super cold and I, I heard a news blast. The police were out giving hot coffee to people at a shopping center. Edith is the deputy commander of the Milwaukee Police Department's Neighborhood po Policy Policing Bureau. Bureau. Policing. It's Policing. Okay, Policing Bureau. Primary responsibility is to provide strategic leadership and direction for personnel assigned to the 7th District Stations and the Neighborhood Task Force. Edith, we're delighted to have you. Thank you. Um, first of all, I'd like to say it's my pleasure to be here with you. I'm deeply and truly honored to be here um, and very humbled to even be asked to be here today. Um, when you think of servant leadership, do you think of the police? Do you think of law enforcement? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but. What does it say on the side of many cars? Not here in Milwaukee, but in many other jurisdictions. It says to protect and serve. That is what we do, truly. We protect and we serve, although it doesn't necessarily seem like it at times. Um, I've had the pleasure of serving my community here in Milwaukee for 24 years um, in law enforcement. Um, during that time, I've had uh, the pleasure of serving in many different capacities as a supervisor, as a police officer, a line officer, um, as a strategic planner for our crime reduction efforts, as an organizer for our community engagement efforts, um, as was mentioned, as um, the first female team leader, actually the person that goes in with our tactical enforcement unit on uh, search warrants, barricaded subjects, a variety of different calls. Uh, that we went in on. Um, I've also, or I see myself also as a coach and a counselor uh, for those folks that I have the pleasure of supervising. Um, so in order to provide just a little additional uh, context to who I am and how I develop my leadership style um, and where I draw my strength, I'd like to just give you something uh, that really is difficult for us to do in law enforcement is to talk about ourselves, who we are, because we have to have that stoic appearance, so bear with me. Um, at no point in my life prior to 19 years of age did I think about law enforcement in any capacity at all. I wanted to be an engineer. I really loved physics, calculus, math, was really good at it. So I wanted to be an engineer and I went to Purdue University. However, during that first year at Purdue, the weed out chemistry really showed me <laughs> <laughs> that engineering was not for me. I didn't know what I would do. So eventually I came back to Milwaukee, I got married, uh, started a family, uh, got a job at an international uh, company doing clerical duties. Um, I did not find fulfillment in that at all. It just wasn't what I felt I was meant to do. So I spent um, a couple of years struggling to find what I wanted to do, who I wanted to be. A friend of mine uh, happened to encourage me to apply for the police department. Oh, the police department's hiring, we need good people, you know, who are, are focused, who care. Uh, why don't you apply? Well, I, I was challenged because certain family members of mine didn't feel that it was something that I was fit to do. It's like, oh, you won't be able to pass the physical. <laughs> All I needed was, was a challenge. So um, I eventually took the test, prepared myself, and I uh, find myself in leadership within the police department. That was in 1990. At that time also, um, women were being hired more and more by the police department. I think within 
by 2000, we had approximately 30% uh, percent female women within law enforcement. So it was a great time for me to be involved. Um, the history of law enforcement is such that you don't didn't see women. If you saw us, we were in the jails as matrons. Uh, we worked in the sensitive crimes area, which uh, is the area that addresses crimes against children, um, sexual assault crimes, those kinds of things that are um, traditionally you know, given to women, traditionally things that we would do within law enforcement. So I was fortunate to start at a time when different doors were opening and we were given, women were given uh, many different opportunities. Um, as I kind of alluded to before, um, for many folks, law enforcement is a vocation. Father, grandfather, now mother, other family members were law enforcement officers. I wasn't, you know, never thought of it. And as I developed my plans for myself through life, you know, again, um, engineering, no secondary plan, um, silly me, it became very clear that God was setting the plan for me. It wasn't my plan, and I'm sure he laughed at me for the many years as I tried to put things together in my life to uh, plan where I was going to go, which clearly wasn't what he wanted, so I learned how to be obedient very quickly. Throughout my career, I've had many opportunities, um, opportunities that I've never requested, that I never dreamed of. Um, part of those were being, you know, the first female uh, tactical SWAT leader. Um, that was something that was really um, unheard of, and it wasn't um, uh, a welcomed experience for me. Uh, for I wasn't welcomed by some in that experience, so it took a lot of hard work on my part. Uh, to gain the respect of those folks that were part of the team, but also to the supervisors that had the faith in me to put me in that position. I also had the privilege of commanding, I think, one of the most challenged districts within the Milwaukee uh, City, and that's our uh, fifth district, which is located on Fourth and Locust, which encompasses the majority of the 53206 zip code, which is one of our most poverty stricken and challenged zip codes. Um, again, not something that I sought, something that God felt that I was the person to do, and I uh, um, was very glad to have that opportunity. And now I have critical areas of the Milwaukee Police Department that I command, again, um, not because that was my goal, because, you know, I didn't have a plan B, so I didn't know where I would go, but really because I, I was guided in the right direction. So during my career, again, to kind of help you see where my leadership style comes from. I had the pleasure of working for a full spectrum of bosses, from exemplary, the best boss you'd ever want to work with, to the most horrible people who were truly disrespectful to me and to others. And I find it, found it to, later on, not at the time, to be a pleasure to work for them because I learned what not to do as a supervisor, learned what traits um, if I saw that in subordinate members that I wanted to stop right away, that I didn't want to see nurtured, didn't want to see developed. So it was truly, um, again, not at the time that I was working with the horrible bosses, <laughs> um, but it truly was a valuable experience for me. Um, those experiences led me to develop what I deem to be my personal guiding principles for how not only I conduct myself at work, but how I live my life and really how I train my children as well, how to live their lives. And those things uh, very simply are golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Also treat others the way that you would want your son, your daughter, your wife, your husband to be treated. Um, if you do that, you really will be successful and go a long way. Um, I am a student of business theory. I was very fortunate. I am a graduate of Alvernal. Uh, college. Mary Mann is the president there. And I learned a lot of things there. But uh, one of the, the, the things, or the, the, the concepts, I guess, that has stuck with me always has been praise in public and chastise in private. That was part of the One Minute Manager, Ken Blanchard. Very, very uh, old book. Like probably 30 years. Which is, I guess shouldn't be old to me, but is. Um, <laughs> Seek first to understand and then to be understood. That's part of uh, Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I really believe that to be true. Uh, be honest, but be nice about it. Do what you say you're going to do, and it's okay to care. 
In law enforcement, we don't show people that we care. And that's a huge mistake on our part. We need to do that more often. Um, the guiding principles really are the foundation of relationship building between myself and my team members. I'm convinced that the positive relationships that I've developed over the years help not only the team members to provide better service to the community, but also to provide better service internally for themselves and their support, subordinate members. It also helps them to stay focused on our goal and our mission, and to remember that in law enforcement, we don't have the luxury of failing. Failure is not an option for us. Lives matter and lives are at stake. So we always need to make sure that we're doing the very best job that we can. Identifying and developing strengths of others really has been um, challenging at times and very rewarding. I'll uh, share a brief story with you about uh, a different a team that I had. Um, this was when I worked at District 5 and some of the um, leadership uh, practices that I employed at that time and a really good success story with them. So a few years ago, I had the, the pleasure of leading a very talented team of police personnel, many of them police officers, but varying ranks within that team. We met weekly, we discussed tr crime trends, different innovative things that we could do, not only with um, traditional law enforcement methods, but some out of the box thinking that we could do with the community to address things that the police department cannot control, but that we would have influence over to um, yield sustainable crime reductions. This team with little direction um, came up with a model, a project that we call our Community Action Day model. And I also uh, employed some of the skills that I learned during my last class at, Univers uh, at um, Alverno and Change Management, the Cotter Eight Step uh, Model for Change Management in guiding this team uh, through the project. So we executed the project within an area of the city of Milwaukee that was particularly challenged. And within a month, a month within the summer, there were no shootings in this area at all. In the entire time I've lived in Milwaukee since I was 10 years old, this area had been plagued and there would never been a time where there had been a month, no matter what time of year, where there were no shootings there. So I know that the efforts of those officers worked very well. Our issue is that it wasn't as sustainable as we would have liked because we can't be there 24 hours a day and some of our community partners lost interest after a while. But we're still working on that model to figure out how to do it effectively and sustainably. Um, the trust and support that I showed my team during that time, I think had lasting impact on them, um, not just at that time, but through this day. Um, many of them still um, are leaders and are doing a, a very good job, not only in District 5, but other areas of the department. Although I prefer to focus my efforts on the strength of my team by coaching and developing them and finding opportunities for them to excel and show their talents, um, I can't ignore weaknesses in their job performance. And my belief is that if I ignore their weakness, then I can't help them to develop. And one quick example of a weakness um, that many of my team members hold is that they lack confidence when speaking in public. It's very, very difficult for them to do. Um, outside of their law enforcement group, which is, is totally different speaking in your law enforcement group and in public. So for those folks, I find opportunities for them to develop that skill set so they can not only continue to serve internally to the best of their ability, but externally as well. Because I won't be in law enforcement forever. Someone's going to have to take over and guide and lead. And the greatest gift I can give to the city of Milwaukee and to the police department is developing those who will come after me to serve and care about this community the way I care about it. Developing the strengths of others is key to the Milwaukee Police Department realizing its mission of creating communities capable of sustaining civic life. We're in the business of relationship building, both internally and externally, and I work diligently to develop others, and my expectation is those that are within my, my group, my direct reports also work diligently to develop their team so that we can provide exemplary service to the community internally and both externally. Because once again, failure for us is just not an option. So we have to be as uh, perfect as we can be. Thank you for your attention.